go over how to do MMM early. This tutorial is not going to be like super polished, but that's mainly because I want to actually get the information out there quickly so that people can start doing runs rather than spending time putting together something a bit more polished. Um, all right, so in this trick, it's going to be useful in 100% if you can do it quickly enough. And it's going to be useful in like all of the any percent categories because we'll get into MMM without having to open it up. And spend about two and a half minutes opening the level. So if you can do this in under two and a half minutes, you save time in literally any category you want. This will only work on the NTSC versions. So NTSC version 1.0 is what most people will be playing on. Theoretically, it should work on Japanese and 1.1 as well. It will not work on PAL and it will not work on Xbox. But it will work on emulators like BizHawk because that's how I found out the glitch. Now, the theory is basically what you're going to do is that on this step in front of Mad Monster Mansion, there's a seam that runs along it and essentially there's a tiny gap in the seam. So that seam runs kind of like diagonally along the step like that. Anyway, um, first thing you're going to do in a run is you're going to come over here and break this gate. Now, I would recommend that you actually peck this gate now because what we'll do rather than walking all the way back there is we're going to do an out of bounds now i need to reload this room because that way you're in the room in a consistent position so you can't just go from here straight to the steps because like you've done all this movement up to the gate the movement that we have to do to do mmm early is very precise down to like like if you know ninpog skip it's about a hundred thousand times more precise than that we're going to be doing a series of bear punches and beak barges to do this. Alright, so basically after you've broken the gate, rather than walking back, leaving the room and coming back in, a faster thing you can do is do this out of bounds. So if you do that, you'll end up on top of that. It's a bit harder than it looks. And then you can kind of like get around this pole here. And then uh, if you can jump off in the corner, you will jump off and you can void out. So that's just a quicker way to reload the room rather than going back out and in. That was something that Chronicles found ages ago. Anyway, so you will have loaded this room and now we're going to start a sequence of movements. So when you come into the room, make sure the jiggy transition has fully faded in because otherwise you're going to get some lag as you're doing this. One of the big parts about this trick is reducing lag because if you get any lag, it throws off your position and ruins the whole thing. You're allowed to get lag when Banjo is standing still, but not when he's moving. All right, so what you're gonna do first of all is, um, actually, one other thing I should mention. Um, I like to do this trick on a GameCube style stick. So in a run, I would swap out my controller for this. Um, the reason that I like the GameCube style stick is because uh, it presses a direction really precisely and really well. Uh, so, yeah, that's just one good thing you can do with it. The, it will work on a normal stick though. It's just that I like to use this both for that reason and to preserve the sticks. Uh, okay, if you're doing this as well, you can look at your HUD info on a practice menu. Um, but uh, don't keep that on while you're practicing the trick because having that menu up can cause lag and actually cause you to mess up the trick. All right, so what we're gonna do is after the jiggy's faded in, we're gonna do four bear punches. Now you want to wait till Banjo has turned his head to the right after the bear punch because that means he's completely stopped moving. Even after it looks like he's stopped moving, he's still got a bit of speed. So if you bear punch again, then it's going to ruin uh, that because you're like messing up the setup. You got to wait till he's got no speed before you do that. The fourth bear punch should put you off the bottom of this step. So now what you need to do is you need to do several full beat barges. So what you want to do is hold Z to beat barge and then press B, hold B, and like let go of Z. It's very important that you don't hold Z after the beak barge because then Banjo will duck and that will cause him to get some extra speed. So we're just gonna do a few of these full beak barges. And wait till Banjo's head has turned fully to the right before you go and do another beak barge. This is basically just getting us up here the quickest way we can while still precisely controlling our movement. Now you'll notice there's like a diagonal seam running like up that way, sort of. Uh, 
You want to stop when Banjo is like here, so he hasn't passed that scene yet. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hold duck and uh, press pause. What we need to do is we need to hold upright and then we need to basically rotate around until we've hit a certain spot and that will get us into a good facing angle. So hopefully I can show off some pictures of what this looks like. All right, so we're going to turn around to the right and I'll just swap this scene here. Uh, so the picture on screen here is what is, oh. this is the leftmost that we can possibly go. So we're going to hold up right and duck and we're going to hold R at the same time. Banjo is going to turn around. You want to look at this gravestone. So there's a set of three gravestones. This is the middle one. Uh, you want that to be just off screen. So like half off screen and you shouldn't be able to see the feather on top of it. So that's the leftmost that you can go. And then the rightmost that you can go is in another picture that I have. So this here is the rightmost you can go. So you'll see that that next gravestone is somewhat on screen. This is a super wide window to hit this and I actually haven't missed it yet. So it's not too bad to hit this one. Anyway, let's get back to this. All right, so basically what you've done is you've ducked and then you've paused. Now, when you unpause, you want to be holding duck, you want to be holding R, and you want to be holding upright exactly on the analog stick. And this is why I kind of like using a GameCube stick for this, because I'm definitely holding full range up and right. So you unpause, and then when you think that second gravestone is going to go off screen, you pause again, and you make sure that it's in that range that I showed before. And that is definitely in that range. So that second gravestone there is fully off screen and the next gravestone which would normally be kind of like up right ish from here so it would normally come up on that right side of the screen that hasn't come up yet so all you need to do now is let go of all of your inputs and unpause and that's got banjo facing in a very particular angle that's needed for this trick next thing you want to do is you want to press c up and as Banjo is going into first person, you then want to hold full right on the joystick. Another thing I should mention is if grungy text comes up during when you're moving, that can cause lag, which can mess you up. All right, so I'm going to press C up and I'm going to hold full right on the joystick and I'm going to show you what frame I'm looking for. I'm looking for, uh, let me just swap scenes again. I'm looking for this frame here. So, I'm going to hold right on the joystick and I'm going to keep pausing and trying to hit this frame. Now, the leg of this is almost off the edge of the screen. And the way that I tell whether I've got the right frame is I look at this kind of left arm of MMM and it should make a nice angle with that honeycomb there. That's how I, that's my reference for this. Okay, we'll move back to the gameplay. And this can take you a few shots. If you miss it, just keep going around. But it's very important that you spin to the right and not to the left. If you spin to the left, this will not work. All right, so hold full right. Try and hit it. That was way off. So I'm going to come around again and try and hit it. These pause buffers will take me a little while in the tutorial. Now, this is perfect because, as you can see, that honeycomb there is perfectly lined up with the edge, which is more obvious to see on the actual uh, display on my computer screen, but you can't. I can't point to that very easily. Actually, maybe I can point to that very easily. So yeah, you're looking for this kind of angle here. Moving on. Once you got that, just unpause and let go of everything. Your camera will move a bit more. That's okay. That's what you want. So then press the up. I like to hold R and zoom out and then get my camera nice here. You basically want to wait till the camera's done what it's going to do, otherwise you run the risk of causing some lag. We're going to do another full barge, make sure you don't hold Z. And then another one here. And then a short one. So you hold Z and then you tap B and then let go of everything. Another full one up this step. And then another full one up this step. Now at this point, 
Um, if you're on a practice menu, you can check your position. Your position should be this. So, 160.712341 and 220.928207. If it's not that, you've done something wrong. All right, turning off the HUD info. Uh, make sure that's off when you're doing this once again, because it can cause lag. Next, we're gonna do some more camera twirls to the right, and this is gonna be a common theme of what we do with this setup. So you're gonna see up and hold right, and then we're gonna pause until we hit the frame that we want. So while I'm paused here, I'll flick back to my desktop and show you the frame that I actually want to hit. Uh, so, uh, not that one, but that one. So basically, this is the frame from emulator that I want to hit, but uh, this is not what it looks like on your console. So I use the reference of this pole on the edge of the screen. On my CRT, uh, I cannot see this pole when I'm paused. I can see like one, two reddish pixels of the very edge of the pole when I'm paused. And if I look in my OBS feed, which you'll see when I get the trick, I can see like a little bit of this pole, but not this much of this pole. So I think a uh, more appropriate image would be uh, stream window with console would be this one here. So this is what it's going to look like in your OBS feed. You're going to see a little bit of that pole, but not as much of it. And you can also line this up by kind of looking at where this Jinjo is on the step. So the Jinjo's chin will be almost parallel to the step, but a little bit underneath it. But the pole is much better because it conflicts less with the setup that we'll see later on. Moving right along. Okay. So, uh, I've missed that. So, I'm going to unpause, go around again, and then pause. Missed it. This is one of the more difficult ones to get. I'm sort of using the reference on the fence to know when to pause. Uh, and then it's just a matter of hitting the correct frame. Some of the times when you come around, there will not be a correct frame to hit. That's just due to some weird lag stuff. Um, but about half the time that you are turning around, um, there is a correct frame to hit. So if you're missing it, it's not necessarily your fault. It could just be a bad like one bad turnaround that you're having. See, that's the frame that I want and it looks the same as what I showed you on the OBS feed before. What that actually looks like on my CRT is I've got two reddish pixels up there which I can see but you wouldn't be able to on this camera. All right. So then you're gonna unpause, zoom out and what you're gonna do is you're gonna beat barge, do a short beat barge and hold Z the whole time. Now, when you hold Z, Banjo retains speed for a really long time so I like to do the short tap of B and hold Z until he starts moving his nose around again. That will make really sure that he's not moving anymore. All right, next thing you wanna do is we're doing another camera setup. Uh, I will show you what that one looks like. It looks like this. So some key things, the health is the health is kind of lined up with the bottom here. If you look at this top health, you can see like a blackish line that kind of runs parallel to the top health and a little bit above it. And this gold feather here is like sort of in line with the fence. So if you continued that line out, you would hit the bottom of the gold feather. And this one's a hard one to find a reference for, but that's basically what you're doing. You could also use return to game. The building should be kind of to the right of the letter A there. In between A and M, that's what you're looking for. All right. So. All right. The setup that I do for when to pause is when I can see the very light brown of the door go off screen. It's a tiny bit after that. And I've hit it. So you can see that that's the same as what you could see in that setup picture. All right, then you unpause. All right, now this is the probably the second hardest part of the trick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save as state just in case I mess this up for the tutorial. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna hit B and then you wanna hit A the frame after. So Banjo is gonna start a bear punch 
and then uh, he's going to do a little hop. And you can hold A if you want. For reference, uh, the positions that you want for this, if you're using a practice menu, is uh, you want this position here, uh, minus 55.313373 and 280.719635 before the bear punch. Now, after the bear punch, well, you may or may not get the bear punch. So if you've got the bear punch, you'll see Banjo move just a tiny little bit. If you haven't got it, that means that you press B and A on the same frame, or you pressed A before B, and you'll just do a little hop in place. And then you can try again. But you need to press B exactly one frame before you press A. So I tried it there, and I didn't see a move. So if I check my position, that should be what it was before, 55.3 on frame. So that's no good. You should be able to see Banjo move a tiny bit. Now, I couldn't quite tell if he moved there. He didn't. Let's try it again. He definitely moved there. Now, let's just make sure that he's moved only one frame. And he has. So your position should be 53.787788 and 280.465118. Okay, we'll turn that off. And obviously you won't have any of this on console, but I've done it on console and you can do it all through the visual cues. The next camera setup we want is very similar to our last camera setup. Uh, so here's what that one's going to look like. It's going to look like this. So this one here is a bit different. Uh, what I use for this is the gold feather is basically touching the top of this very first pole that you see. And this one has the reference for on the reference for pausing is a little bit earlier than the last one that we saw. Um, I usually pause when like the very last black line on the door is passing the screen. So basically when that last wood plank of the door is passing the screen, that's when I pause. All right, so get rid of Grunty. Um, I'm gonna see up and hold right. Make sure you're holding right as you go into see up. We're gonna pause, way too early. That was late by a frame. And that's the one you want. Okay, so the gold feather is sitting over the top of that post there and you can see a tiny bit of the door, like just on the left side of the screen there. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna do two bear punches and each one of them we're gonna duck. So we're gonna do bear punch and hold Z the whole time. So basically as soon as you've pressed B, hold Z. I wait for Banjo Snout to start moving again. Do it again. We're gonna end up here. Now, this will be the last camera setup we're going to do here. Um, it looks like this. And the way that I do this camera setup, it's a bit earlier than the other similar setup we see. See, we don't see the pole at the right of the screen there. What I do is I use this Jinjo's chin. So if you're using this yellow Jinjo, it's basically the same for both of them. The chin will be a bit under the stair and the head will be a bit over the stair. Like where the Jinjo's mouth is, that's meeting the stair and the bottom of the chin goes a little bit under. So you can see a bit of stare over the top. This one is also one of the harder ones to hit because there's not a lot of reference for when you should be pausing. I kind of use the fence posts at the back. So that's way too early because see the yellow ginger is all the way um, across before the stare. We'll try again. That's early but not as early as it was before that's one frame too early and that's perfect all right so then you unpause and you get out of CR now this is going to be the hardest part of what we're doing here so I'm going to save a state for this if I were to bear punch now and you should do this the first time you do it if I bear punch now, Banjo is going to like dip over a little gap in the floor. Like that. You can see that you almost fell through there. So I'll reload that state. What we want to do is we want to time a jump when Banjo is over that gap. And this is the hardest part of the trick. But I have a method to help you do this a little bit easier. So we're going to use a metronome. 
and it's set to 84 beats per minute. That's the number that works for me. I would recommend you also, if you've got headphones listening to game audio, you take out those headphones now because you'll need to listen to this metronome. So what's going to happen is we're going to um, bear punch on a beat, then do nothing on the next beat. Then on the beat after that, we're going to press and hold A to jump. Then on the beat after that, we're going to ground pound in. All right, so here's how it goes. Three, four, one, two, three. So I missed it there. That's fine. Two, three, four, one, two, three. All right, that was too early. Two, three, four, one, two, three. That was too early again. Grunty's text there may have caused some issues. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So um, it's on the one is B, on the two you do nothing, on the three you press A and hold it, and on the four you press Z. Now the actual timing of the ground pound does matter. Uh, so if you do the ground pound in the wrong spot, Banjo may not clip through the floor. And the way that you know if you've got the jump correctly is that Banjo's shadow will not be over the floor. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So then after that, you can just jump into the level. <laughs> not, not do that. Uh, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I missed it there. But you get the idea. You just run behind the door and jump into the level. There's solid ground underneath the stairs. And uh, you may want to play around with the beats per minute on your metronome. I found 84 works well for me, but you might want to go a little bit lower, depending how you want it. Alright, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I'll be keen to see people start using it in runs.